My husband asked me if I was going to have a blooper reel for the e-course and I said I have been deleting that stuff as fast as possible and then I got to thinking about it and like so many things I can always make more so here is a little uncut footage or barely cut in some cases that shows you kind of the behind the scenes look at the New Age Looping Basics e-course and some of the stuff in my sample case. I'll apologize right now for the for the uh, <laughs> well actually you can see that I've edited audio as well as video so let's just go to the video. I'll see you there. Hi it's Donna here. Here's your beast, your secret super secret behind the scenes look at the making of the New Age Looping Basics e-course. We'll have to stop if the furnace kicks on in my studio because you won't be able to hear the audio, first of all. Okay. Secondly, everything was shot with this camera. This is a little Sony um, super steady shot. And the hardest part of the whole class, for me anyway, was being able to find the stitch with my bifocals with the camera in between me and and the work that I was doing. So here is where most of the video was shot. Bear with me here. This is a corner of my studio. I have a movable design wall there and a sheet hanging from a piece of wood that I have it stapled to and a reflector and a piece of white foam core board. Most of the time I have things on the tripod and a chair right here so that everything looks like this with my hands between here and there. This is <clears throat> the messy place where I hung a shirt that would always be available and look the same in every shot and not be in the dirty clothes hamper at the time that I needed it. It is a little whiffy now and needs to go in and be washed. This is part of my extra lighting. That's going to go back into the house next to my chair so that I have better light for my handwork now. When I was talking about posture in video 4, it was up here, my chair. Right now, this is more like what my work table normally looks like. Yeah, that's it. Um, this is all the stuff I stacked out of the way because my table was taken up by this stuff. And here's a tip. I always keep my thread on a spool holder that my husband made for me so that once I know which way to thread it on the needle, if the spool is spun the other direction, I'm good to go. Once I know that spool needs to have this end threaded on the needle, I never have to <laughs> search for it again. Those little hairs. Let's see here. Uh, this is stuff I haven't got put away. A big pile of molds. Ooh, good molds. Old cassette cases. Old floppy disk cases. CD jewel cases. Plastic tubing. Bars of soap. Little containers. Playing cards. And a whole pile of stuff that is either works in project process or needs to be put away or go into 
this container right here, which if I can, I will show you. Actually, I'm going to put this on the tripod so I have my hands free for this. Okay, this is a case with some of my samples that usually travels with me when I go to classes. And you may have seen some of these in the class and not others. Here's a very, oops, let's see if I can find, very early piece of simple looping made with silk ribbon. Hat. This isn't working, is it? I really need to get this into the background so you can see things. See how this works. Silk ribbon. There's a beret from my book that's made off of a band made from recycled sweater. This is a bag that a friend brought back from, from Central America. This is um, bromeliad fiber. And look at this fabulous base the way that this bag is started. I love this piece. It's so soft. I wish you could feel it. Oh, this is a hat I made from basswood bark and hand spun silk. Not hand spun by me, but from Habu Textiles. A recycled t-shirt and looping as a filling in this little purse. I usually put candy in this and wear it with the crown, which is hidden in the case somewhere, so that I can throw candy to the crowd. This is looping over a core Fawagian coiling set up as a chase. Let's see. This is my old camera case made from toothbrush looping that I sewed an image transfer to. That's a picture of my dad and a bag with a pocket and a tab flap which is just about the right size for carrying my lunch in and putting in a napkin. Another bag with pockets and, and a flap closure with the, with the button. Just a sample playing with different ways to create textures. I have this idea that I ought to be able to make something that looks like cables. So I'm working on that. Little free form piece, simple bag, just changing colors, but then on the flap creating layered free form piece and then stitching around. On the inside of this there's horsehair braid to give it some, some body so that it doesn't stretch too much when I put the bag. It's just large enough that uh, put a little weight in it. And I did stiffen the bottom on this with a little bit of plastic canvas so there's a double layer bottom in there. There's a little sock that I made. Good ex exercise for shaping. Mm, I love Burundi, which intersects with multiple previous rows. This piece has a slider lid. If I can, this is two color trades and worked in this complex looping, you really get a strong sense of vertical stripes from the two color trades. A little bead looping to get things started on here. This is something that stays in this case all the time so that when I'm standing in front of a group I can demonstrate the basic looping technique. The material here 
is from a spool of jute that I bought for a macrame project in 1974. I'm almost done with it. Oh, here's a little sample that I started testing cabled yarn, which is a waste of cabled yarn, but um, anyway. And here's another sample. I was testing knitting panels combined with looping to hold sections together. And this is actually cross knit looping. And I, I, I'm liking this piece because it, uh, <coughs> well, actually, it's just real functional. Um, oh, here's the crown. I'm not going to put it on for you right now. You can just imagine that I look fabulous in it, and so does everyone else who's ever put it on. Here's a piece that incorporates skipped and knotted stitch combinations. And this was, I made this to hold, and my mother-in-law always kept her crochet needles in uh, an old hinged hard shell eyeglass case. So that's what this was made for, to hang that case. There's a little, I call these amoebas, these little vessels. And it's a freeform shaping um, exercise. Lots of fun to make these. Here's a necklace that I made using the same chase style for wagian coiling as the little velvet bags, but over tubing. And then I used some bead looping to cap the ends and make a little slider element for the center. A little free form over an ultra suede liner that I never liked the colors on. There's another one that I didn't like the proportion on. Let's see here. This is some free form bead looping made up into a bracelet with ultra suede on the back side to neaten it up. There's a little basswood bark cordage looping. Here's one of those <clears throat> uh, soap scrubbers felted with some skip stitch patterning in it that I cut off the bar of soap after it was all used up and makes a nice little pouch like this. It's a little more cross knit looping with a fun little detail at the rim and some intarsia. Some skip stitch looping on my tape measure. A little free form from my friend Di gave me these beautiful shards of stained glass. She's a stained glass maker and they make fabulous little pins for free form. Oh, there's a soap scrubber. There's a whole pile of bead looping samples just to keep to remind me of which colors kind of work together the, between the, the bead colors and the, the thread colors. Here's a whole pile of other bead looping samples just to remind me of things that I've tried 
and either mean to get back to or mean never to do again. This stuff just all stays in this case so that other people can see who this is. Chain link uh, looping is what I call it. And it's a semi-complex form of looping, very open, but with multiple intersections. And again, you, you never really can see how cool some of these are when you see all the way through the piece. But this one, this is a structure I really love. See me pawing through the case until I get to the back of it here. Here's, oh, for, I know we got a bunch of gourd artists. Here is a cutout of a gourd on a gourd shard with holes drilled in and a looping filling worked on the inside. Another one of the stained glass freeform pieces. This is the one I really love. This is some looping worked on the surface of what I call fiber phyllo. It's a, a lamination of fabrics and paper. So it's got a lot of body, but it, you can still fold it and stitch it. Here's a little vessel I intended to make into a class at one point. You can see the size of it. And since it took me 12 hours, I thought there's no way any conference will ever accept this as a class. And they haven't. You guys know how, how long looping takes. You've, you've learned <laughs> how long looping takes. But for people who don't do it or haven't done it, they, they don't always quite understand that. Just some little samples. This is the little bag that I keep in case I need to cut into a sample and show people that but my scissors are underneath the pile right now. Sorry about that. That looping will not unravel. Oh. Willow coiled oval base and some intarsia looping and some looping over a core. Um, some different stitch variations in these sample pieces for a little basket. Here's a Brandy vessel. Again, another one that that doesn't look very big, doesn't look like there's much to it. it takes a long time. Really good techniques and shaping challenges in here. And <laughs> this is a, a sample that was worked as a square and then folded together and I used textural looping to camouflage the seam lines and add some body to the rim. This is another variation on the flip turns panel idea that's never been accepted in a conference. Okay, hang on, I have to get to the other side of the case. Okay. Here's, for you gourd people, here's another uh, small vessel where I used a coiled rim and then worked textural looping around the rim using that coiling as an anchor point, but it's completely covered, and a little freeform running out of memory on, on here until I get done. So, textural looping, more textural looping. This is without it all being covered up. And this shows you what it looks like when a mouse chews on the looping. It does not unravel. Here's Siberian iris uh, coiling for the body of this little doll and some skip stitch patterning and some textural looping. One of my favorite. Fresh memory card. We should be okay now. Okay. Here's a vase covered with freeform looping. And because I couldn't find a vase that I wanted, I painted the inside with acrylic paint and it's worked okay. 
This is one of my favorite pieces. Um, my friend Sue made this for me a long time ago. She has beautiful textural work. Thank you, Sue. Some more freeform and skip stitch patterning on a little gourd. Another little gourd with a pocket. Pockets are really oh, this is what you know that that uh, technique we've used for closing edges together. That's what it looks like when you work it open and it's supported. It's a very cool stitch. And and these are some netting water bottles. This is a technique that I do at a lot of conferences is these little water bottle carriers because it's a fairly doable size. And this is my casserole carrier, which these are really hard to photograph so that it looks like anything, which is probably why it's hard to get anybody to say, oh, that's really cool, until I have it filled with casserole dishes and I go to a potluck. Because then all my basket maker friends have brought baskets and we run out of places to set stuff. And here my my dish goes inside, handles to carry it, it goes in my pocket until it's time to come home. Lots and lots of fun things to do with netting. I think that ought to, whoops, I forgot about this. There's my mug. This way I can always tell whose I should be drinking out of. and. This one actually, this little freeform piece, got sort of stretched out over time. And I cut it apart and sewed it back together to make it fit better so it wasn't sliding up underneath my lip when I drank. That's another nice thing about looping is you can remodel it. So. Okay, here's some more stuff. This is the stuff that's hanging on the walls. Let's see. This is a piece I did last year. And I'm not sure you can get the detail on this with the looping filling. That is anchored with the um, buttonhole stitch around the reverse applique more looping filling all of this stuff on the surface this is the fish jumping out of my head this piece is called full of ideas that is the way i feel most of the time here's a piece that uses a picture of my mother-in-law called night shift and more netting and looping in this piece called Night Owl. And there's the furnace kit uh, kicking on finally. So the audio is going to be bad here for me to even try to show you bag of looping false starts and misspent efforts but these are like gold to me the most valuable thing because it reminds me of an idea I had but just because it didn't work out the first time doesn't mean it doesn't have potential and if nothing else I can do this. Hang on a second. The drama is completely lost. <clears throat> if you can't see it. I can do this in front of a group of people. 
and watch the collective gasp of breath until they see that looping, in fact, will not unravel. <laughs> so now, after watching uncut footage, I bet you're really glad I edited most of those videos and could have edited them a little bit tighter and shorter, I'm sure. But I want to take this opportunity to tell you thank you. I thank you for being part of the New Age Looping Basic eCourse. Oh, I don't think you can see, but Scout wants to thank you too. She's getting finally getting in the picture. <laughs> uh, this is my studio companion here. And thank you for being my studio companions as well. I really appreciate your feedback, your hard work, your efforts, and your good humor as we worked our way through the pilot uh, session of the New Age Looping Basics eCourse. I hope to see you again soon, either online or in the real world. In the meantime, take care and thank you. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. All right, say goodbye, Scout. Ha, 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 ha.